Welcome to this morning's worship. Let us begin. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Sanctify us in your truth. Your word is truth. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. With joy will you draw water from the wells of salvation, and you will say in that day, Give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people. Proclaim that, the, that his name is exalted. The Lord God is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. Sing praises to the Lord, for he has done gloriously. Let this be made known in all the earth. Shout and sing for joy, O inhabitants of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. The Lord God is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Acts, the second chapter. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be made known to you and give ear to my words. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. And with many other words he bore witness and continued to exhort them, saying, Save yourselves from this crooked generation. So those who received his word were baptized, and there were added that day about 3,000 souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Luke, the 24th chapter. That very day, two of them were going to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What is this conversation that you are holding with each other as you walk? And they stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, named Cleopas, answered him, are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? And he said to them, What things? And they said to him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, a man who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things happened. Moreover, some women of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning, and when they did not find his body, they came back, saying that they had seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who, who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. And he said to them, O foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So they drew, drew near to the village to which they were going. He acted as if he were going further. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us 
for it is toward evening and the day is now far spent. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took the bread and blessed it, broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were open and they recognized him and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose that same hour and returned to Jerusalem. And they found the eleven and those who were with them gathered together, saying, The Lord has risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be yours from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I start off today confessing that I'm not the best gift giver. My children are very good at providing meaningful and unexpected gifts, but me, not so much. I'm the kind of guy who, for his anniversary, bought his wife a gym membership or a certificate for a makeover and then didn't understand while I was left sleeping on the sofa for a week. I'm the kind of guy who for Christmas gets the, his kids that automobile emergency kit, not the cheap kind, mind you, but the deluxe model with the jumper cables and the air compressor. And then I am surprised when their faces tell me that it wasn't the gift of their dreams. Well, thankfully, we discover from our readings and acts both this week and next that our risen Lord is a much better gift giver than any of us. After his resurrection, he has provided us with meaningful and unexpected gifts, ones through which we receive spiritual and eternal blessings. The first gift which our Savior offers us uh, which I want to talk about today is the cleansing gift of holy baptism. You see, after Peter had completely decimated the people with his words of condemnation, telling them that the same Jesus that they had hatefully and scornfully crucified was in fact the Lord and Christ, they were cut to the heart. They knew that they were guilty of the worst kind of sin against God. They justly deserved to have the earth swallow them up and to face eternal punishment. And this led them then to gut-riching gut -riching sorrow and fear. And they cried out to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And that is when Peter introduced them to the first wonderful gift from their risen Christ, saying, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. It's important that we always remember that when Peter answered their appeal, he was not as much telling them what they must do to get themselves right with God as he was pointing them to the work of God for them. It's kind of like this. Last week, my girlfriend, who is an excellent cook, fixed a wonderful meal for me. And when she told me to sit down and eat, I did not for a moment take that as some kind of command or something that I was being forced to do to make her like me. I knew that it was a gracious invitation to receive a wonderful blessing and gift, and, and then so it was. In the same way, the call to repentance and baptism is not a challenge to perform some kind of pleasing work for God. First of all, repentance is not something that any of us can work up in ourselves. It is, it is always the power of the Holy Spirit doing God's alien work in us through the law, which is God's word that accuses us and convicts us and cuts us to the heart. There is also the Holy Spirit doing God's proper work in us through the gospel, which is God's word that creates faith and, 
and comforts us. And baptism, well, it is always a pure gift and a promise from the risen Christ. It's not an act of obedience that we are required to do to demonstrate our commitment to Christ. And it's certainly more than just a ritualistic ceremony for initiation. Baptism is pure gospel promise. It is a gift of grace, not a legal requirement. This is why we continue to administer baptism the way it has always been, as a gift and promise that is for all people, including our children. Yes, we baptize all people regardless of age because we understand repentance and faith and baptism are gifts of God which have been promised to us by our risen Christ. As Peter says, this promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. Who are we to break the promise that Christ has made to the little ones? After all, they are the ones to whom he said the kingdom of heaven belongs. So baptism is the special gift through which Jesus comes and fulfills the promise that he made to his first disciples and to all of us. And the first of those promises is that in baptism, we receive the forgiveness of sins. In baptism, our risen and ascended Lord Jesus Christ comes to us and he connects himself to us in such a way that we are no longer who we once were because we have been given to share in all his blessings, even his righteousness before God. John Newton, who was an English slave trader who was brought to repentance, the one who wrote one of our most cherished hymns of all time, Amazing Grace, once said, I am not what I might be. I am not what I ought to be. I am not what I wish to be. I am not what I hope to be. But I thank God I am not what I once was. And I can say with the great apostle, by the grace of God, I am what I am. St. Paul, speaking of the life-changing power of baptism, says in Romans 6, We were therefore buried with Christ through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. If we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. That's right, baptism is where Jesus unites himself with us to kill and bury that old condemned person who fought against God and was by nature an object of his just anger. In baptism, he also unites himself with us to create a new and eternal life of joy and peace and and willing obedience. And in baptism, he unites himself with us so that we may be certain of sharing in his resurrection and entering into everlasting glory. In addition, through baptism, the Bible tells us that we actually put on Christ. We are clothed in his righteousness to become the children of God and heirs with him. This means that baptism is the the gift that Jesus has given us that has become the, the answer to our damning dilemma. See, God demands perfect righteousness, right? But the Bible and our own consciences make it clear that we are sinful and unclean, not loving God with our whole heart and not loving our neighbors as ourselves. This means that we are totally unworthy of God's love and undeserving of the rewards of eternal life in heaven. Even when that truly hits home, and cuts us to the heart, it is a dreadful thing. It is what causes us, like the people to whom Peter first spoke in Acts, to cry, what shall I do? And that is when our risen Christ tells us, use the gift I have given you and you will receive the forgiveness I purchased for you on that cross. Use the gift I have given you and I will cover and clothe you in my own robe so that you may stand before God. 
through his servants, he continues to answer us, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sin. So through the gift of holy baptism, our sins are washed away. We put on Christ's righteousness and we are saved. But there's still more. Peter goes on to tell the people, be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's right. With the gift of baptism, our risen and ascended Lord also gives us the Holy Spirit. If you remember, Jesus repeatedly promised his disciples that he would send the Holy Spirit to be their comforter and helper. He would send the Holy Spirit to take all that he had said and done and make it known to them. He would send the Holy Spirit to sanctify them in his word of truth. He would send the Holy Spirit to empower them to be his witnesses. Jesus assured us that he would fulfill the Baptist's promise and he would pour out the gift of the Holy Spirit after he had risen and ascended. And that is what he did and continues to do. Pentecost marks the primary fulfillment of that promise to the disciples. As Peter told the people gathered together that day, exalted to the right hand of God, Jesus has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit and has poured out what you now see and hear. But it did not end there. Now, through our risen Christ and his gift of holy baptism, he continues to keep that promise as he gives us the same Holy Spirit. Be baptized and you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. In baptism, our Lord gives us salvation to a new life, a spirit-filled and spirit-led life that is lived in a new way. Herman Edwards was the colorful and witty former coach of the Kansas City Chiefs. And when he first took on the team, he discovered that many of the players were in it only for themselves. He worked arduously to change that culture. He eventually could proudly say, the players that play on this football team will play for the name on the side of the helmet and not the name on the back of the jer jersey. So it is for all of us who have received the risen Christ gift of holy baptism. We are a new people who live not for ourselves, but for him who lived and died and rose again for us. We live new lives in which everything we do is for the glory of God. In Titus chapter 3, we're told, He saved us not because of the righteous things we had done, but because of His mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom He poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ our Savior. All of us who have been called to repentance and received Christ's gift of baptism are saved. We are washed clean and born again to be daily renewed by that Holy Spirit. With a clean heart and the right spirit that he works in us, we do not live for our own name, but the name that was placed on us in our baptism. Led by the Holy Spirit, we will no longer conform to the pattern of this world, but we will be transformed by the renewing of our minds. In the power of the Holy Spirit, we will save ourselves from this crooked generation as he leads us on the narrow way of faith and life and salvation. We will rejoice and celebrate that we are blessed to be numbered among those who by receiving the word and being baptized have been added to the number of God's people who are being saved and sanctified to his holy purpose. So let us give praise to our risen Christ for his precious gifts. And in the power of our baptism, in the joy of the resurrection, let us continue to proclaim that Christ is risen he is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. And now the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the gift of divine peace and of pardon with all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the holy Christian church here and scattered throughout the world, the missionary work of Anthony and Jamie, Ashley and James in Puerto Rico, for St. Paul Lutheran Church of Lexington, 
And for the proclamation of the gospel and the calling of all to faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this nation, for our cities and communities, for those who serve in our armed forces like Daniel and Madison, and for the common welfare of us all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For seasonable weather and for the fruitfulness of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who labor, for those whose work is difficult or dangerous, for all law enforcement officers and other first responders, and for all who travel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all those in need, for the hungry and homeless, for the widowed and orphaned, and for all those in prison, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Sandy, Terry, and Steve, Cindy, Peg, and Alice, David, Chris, and Jackie, and Kathleen, and Kevin, for the sick and dying and for all those who care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the homebound and the infirm, for business owners who struggle from the forced closings of their businesses, for all who have lost their source of livelihood and for the unemployed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our congregation, for the challenges that are now before us, for our continued growth in the gospel, and for our brothers and sisters in Christ, Rick, Ron, Brandy, and Gracie, and Rachel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all marriages and families, for those who celebrate anniversaries this week, for Glenn and Lori, Jerry and Jane, Chuck and Rose, and Ron and Diane, for his grace in enlarging and preserving our families in a spirit of love, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Finally, for these and for all our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. O oh God, through the humiliation of your Son, you raised up the fallen world. Grant to your faithful people, rescued from the peril of everlasting death, perpetual gladness and eternal joys. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and take them to heart that by the patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Christ has been raised from the dead. Alleluia, alleluia. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. Raised from the dead, he will never die again. Death has no more dominion over him. Christ has been raised from the dead. Alleluia, alleluia. Dying, Christ dies to sin once for all. Living, he lives to God. Count yourselves as dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless and preserve you. Amen. This concludes our worship.